Yesterday was Cinco de Mayo, so today is May 6. It's Giada Valenti here in Las Vegas, almost 50 days with you in this Giada Live in my quarantine together with you. Can you believe it? I think two days from now is going to be 50 days. We're going to be spending every, we spend every day one hour together at least. Uh, today is uh, 2 p.m. of course, every day 2 p.m. here in Las Vegas, 5 p.m. for you guys on the East Coast, many of you on the East Coast. E ore 23 per voi che ci guardate dall'Europa, tantissimi siete. E ore 22 per quelli che ci guardano dall'Inghilterra, l'Irlanda. 22 for you guys watching from Ireland, England, when you are one hour behind Italy. So how are you doing, guys? Where are you watching from? I see a lot of familiar names uh, joined there. Diane Fiorentino, of course, from Las Vegas. She's with me today, too. And I see uh, Richard from Liverpool. I see who else do I see? I see Antonio, of course, Antonio from uh, Ireland. It's or 22 for you, or 22 di sera. And uh, Antonio brought a lot of people also from Australia. I know they are with us every day. And for them, it's very early. It's like, uh, uh, you know, five o'clock in the morning, even five or seven in the morning. So, buongiorno a voi, good morning to the one watch from. Uh, uh, Australia, what else? What else? I see also Paula Maggio, more Vegas in the house. I see oh, Joseph Rainona from Connecticut. I see Bob Walker. So, guys, I almost know a lot of you because you guys have been with me every day for such a long time. But the one of you that are new, please let everybody know where are you watching from? Doug from Sacramento, of course, uh, also been with me for a long time. And for the one of you that has been on the Java Live for all, almost all those 50 days, you know that uh, the music is made possible by, uh, and thanks to to Doug, the Doug um, bought me the mixer that I use every Sunday and every day actually to sing a song for you. So, you know, at the end of the program, I also sing a song for you. Today, you requested to me a, a song that I, I, I've done last Sunday at a concert for my brother. And you said, can you please sing it again? I said, of course I will. Uh, your wish is my command. So I think that was the same, right? Quello che chiedete io uh, es esaudisco in italiano, I think that's what you say in English. So today uh, I have a guest, of course, yesterday you guys saw Nathan East. I've learned that this is the sign language for a, for a bass player. So yesterday we had Nathan East and today my guest is a comedian, John Di Domenico. So this is the sign language for comedian thanks to my friend Diane Fiorentino. And uh, so in a few seconds, I will invite him. He's here in La Las Vegas like me. So today, Vegas is in the house, actually. I also got a text message from John John Katz, our John Katsilomatis, the, our uh, uh, news uh, reporter in Las Vegas, was asking me, are you going home today at 2? Yes, John, I'm going on every day, 2 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Periscope, Twitch. Twitter and LinkedIn. Do you remember the first time that we had Twitch and Periscope? I could never remember those two names, Twitch and Periscope. Now I know the Twitch, actually, I went there, guys. I went there and it's a page where people can do games. So I always say, don't be afraid if you don't know what Twitch is. It's probably because you are younger than 25. I would say even 15, but you know, because I stopped playing games when I was 16. So, but anyways, young kids. And I have a lot of people there, actually. Most of the time when I'm cooking in the kitchen, it looks like those young uh, game gamers, they really love to cook. So on Saturday, I always see a lot of them gathering on Twitch and asking, what is she cooking? What is she doing? So, uh, and Periscope, of course, a Periscope. I had never heard of Periscope before these things happen. And I've been there too. It's kind of interesting. But of course, the most popular are either YouTube, which I always ask you, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you guys did it because actually my numbers went up. We are more than uh, 1,000 people now over there. And I always ask you, please, if you're watching from um, a page, uh, I have three pages on Facebook. Now it's confusing. Two personal pages and one is my uh, uh, real one, the, the fan page. I'm always asking everybody, 
please join my fan page because that's where I, I put most of my uh, videos and where normally it's easier for me to communicate and uh, with you guys. So where are you watching from? I see also Michelle Romstein. Uh, I keep a problem with their family name. I'm going to ask uh, my guest how to pronounce properly her name for me. She's my Michelle. Michelle Mabel. She's adorable. I love her. She's Michelle, but she has this Rothstein, something like that. Very difficult for an Italian girl to say, but I adore her nevertheless. So today, I'm going to have a guest that will crack you up from the beginning until the end if he wanted to. But I want to get in deeper in it because I know him because he lives in Las Vegas together with Michelle. We've been to several parties together, but I never really ask him personal questions about the man behind the amazing talent that we all see. So let me tell you something. The, the guest today, his name is John Di Domenico, which by the way sounds so Italian. If you saw my interview this morning with the Order of Sons of Italy, they I mentioned his name during the interview and even they, they they know him because he's doing all these things on cameo well i'm too there you know that we wish you happy birthday or whatever things you want to do and they asked me if i could introduce them to him so he's going to be guest also the order of sons of italy one of these days and they were so grateful and happy as john and john said of course i'll do that so john is italian that's why i love him yes yes you know you know you're there there is always up to some italian in the people i love john Casilomes. I thought he was Greek, he's half Italian, that's why I love him, uh, that explains love for him. So my guest today, it's, it's a comedian, it's a comedian, of course. We all know him for uh, because he's impersonating everybody in, in, the, in his career, I mean, he has impersonated so many uh, amazing characters. Um, Austin Power, JJ, can you show some of the pictures? There he is, Austin Power. Uh, he has done for Mr. Dr. Evil, there he is. He has done uh, um, Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil, there he is. He has done Jay Leno, which I adore Jay Leno, and he does an amazing, look at him, amazing sweet Jay Leno. Uh, he has done many of them, but of course, we have a president now. Yeah, look at him. Uh, it's always John Di Domenico, guys. He's impressive. He changes his body language. He changes his voice. But, of course, he's been doing Guy Fieri, my favorite chef, the crazy one, barbecuing. That's not Guy Fieri, ladies and gentlemen. That's it's John Di Domenico. But, of course, he's been doing for, for, for many years uh, Donald Trump, our, our president. This is the sign for our president. And... Ever since uh, Donald Trump is our president, of course, can you imagine amount of telephone call he's getting for people that want to hear something like he's our president? So it's been actually, he's appearing almost every day on, on gazillions of television shows and uh, this morning in Britain, today show in Australia, Sunrise Live in Australia, today show in Ireland. He's, be, he's the Trump for ABC News Australia, Planet America, to the Today Show. He has national press uh, lately because of his appearance that, that went viral on the, the, the LA Times, in the New York Times, the Guardian of uh, the Las Vegas Review. Many times he, he's been on the cover. And he's, he's of course, the Donald Trump of Conan O'Brien. I think he's been there for more than 50 vocals and camera appearances. So he's just a super, super busy, busy man doing our president, Donald Trump. But today I asked John to appear, to give me half an hour of his time, because I want to know, because he's a genius in his comedy, but who is really John Di Domenico? So without further ado, let's see if John is here with us. Is he there? Hi, Giada. There he is. Buongiorno. No. <laughs> Hello, Joe. I never know. Every time I call you, I never know who is appearing. Can be. It could be the president. You never know. Oh, it could be Austin Powers, baby. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I love you, Mendo. I could be Dr. Evil, too, you know. I love Dr. Evil. And this is just what you can do in a second, just like that. But, <laughs> of course, when you do your impersonator, you have you really became, also physically, you became like them. I mean, it's impressive, John. But before we go into that discussion, because I have gazillions of questions about you in, in the hearts in, as a comedian, but where is John Di Domenico coming from? John Di Domenico sounds Italian to me. It, it is Italian. My um, grandfather came over from Italy, uh, Italia, uh, from, in 1908. He landed in Ellis Island, and he had two brothers already here in the U.S., and they he went up to Rochester, New York, and um, they ended up going 
out to California and he decided he felt it was too cold in Rochester, too much snow. So he wanted a much warmer climate. So he went very far south to the very tropical Philadelphia. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I don't know how he ended up in Philadelphia, but he ended up in Philadelphia and then he started his family there. He met my grandmother, Conchetta, who was Conchetta, Conchetta Coppola. And uh, they got married and then had their family. And then my father uh, had his family. I'm part of his second family. Um, I was born in 62. And uh, that's it. We grew up in Ambler, Pennsylvania, which is right outside of Philadelphia. And it's a predominantly Italian town. All my neighbors were Italian. Zalos and Roccos and Riccios and Dugatos <laughs> and Defesta you know, Defestanos. It was Pugliese, you name it. It was a very, very Italian uh, area to grow up in. Oh, wow. So I, 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 I read uh, because, of course, every time I interview somebody and, and we know each other, but not that well on a personal right. level, John. So, yeah. So I, I, I was reading on everything I could find on Wikipedia about you. I always make fun that Wikipedia is my Eight way years. of acknowledging. Eight years. <laughs> no believe it's thing. And years. I saw you have a degree in speech communications, right, from the, the yeah. Temple University in Philadelphia. How did you went from having a degree in speech communication, which I think is amazing because communication, I said this morning, is that the way they differentiate ourselves from the animals. Sometimes the animals are more human than us. We can talk, so that's why, why we are different from them. But how and, and how did you went from that degree into acting and being a comedian, the amazing comedian? Well, um, it's it's kind of a long story, but when I was a kid, I had a, a severe, uh, severe speech impediment. So I had trouble speaking, but I started doing voices when I was five years old. And when I did the impersonations, the impressions, there was no speech impediment. Oh. And I was a big ham, so I loved to perform. But I also realized when I wasn't doing a voice all the time, I, people had trouble understanding me. So when I got into school, like first grade, um, they tested me and I ended up doing speech communication, uh, speech therapy for eight years, two times a week for eight years. So I, I got became very interested, obviously, in communication. And I, I was already an actor. I was already a ham performer, comedian. But when I, um, during taking all that uh, speech therapy with speech pathologists, it really became like, how do you communicate, um, not just with your voice, but with words and all those types of things. So when I went to college and I had to pick a, a major, uh, I looked at theater but I felt that it was a little too confining because, <laughs> you know, I never knew what I was going to do. My plan was always to be an actor, but I didn't know after school if that would happen. So I didn't want to yeah. go to get a job and someone says, oh, you have a theater degree. This is really awesome. So I felt it, it covered all my bases being in speech communications, which I do I, now because I do a lot of corporate work and communication is, you know, kind of the, the bedrock of what I do, either as a comedian, as a performer, as a host. Yeah. I, I mean, you're impressive because, I mean, now we see John Di Domenico. I mean, you you don't have nothing that resembles either the president of none of the characters that you do. So my question to you, I mean, of course, you're studying it. When you prepare for a characters, mm -hmm. you have to study the body language, the way right. they speak. the And and I, I, can you can you walk us through the process of how you analyze a character and how you became them? Well, you know, when I, I always wanted to be, I always did voices from the time I was a kid and I wanted to be an actor. So a lot, my training is as an actor. I trained in Philadelphia at the Walnut Street Theater, the oldest theater in the United States. I trained in New York um, at the HB Studios with Uta Hagen. I was doing a lot of acting work. And when you study as an actor, you learn the physicality of the character. You learn the facial expressions of the character. You learn all these components that go into each performance. So for me, as I was learning to be an actor and still doing voices and then starting to get work as an impersonator, to me, it all came together. I was going to do, I wasn't just going to do the voice or a quick thing. Each one of my impersonations is, is going to be a performance for me. So that meant building the character um, from all sides, you know, getting the wardrobe. And to me, like all those things are have to be right. So when I take on someone like, um, I'll use, you know, 
Trump for like a perfect example. When I started doing him, I do my research. There's always like eight points that I look at for uh, a voice. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's it's vocal production, like throat placement, nasal placement, actual inside the mouth, vocal production. Where's that person from? So with Trump, it was easy because New York is very close to Philadelphia. <laughs> and he has a very specific way of speaking. <laughs> we over enunciates. And every now and then you hear a little bit of the New York accent. So they're always, so I'm like taking all those components and I love notes. I always write everything down. And when I was looking at Trump, and I started doing him back in 2004. But when I was looking at him, I was thinking, like, where is he from? Where well, he's from Queens. And I know I know Queens, but no one else speaks like him in <laughs> Queens. But wait, wait, there's somebody who does. And another actor from Queens is Christopher Walken. So Walken has that whole staccato, staccato, wow. So if you take Walken and you merge it with Trump, it's... It's the same kind of thing. So you kind of mix, you find out where the voices come from. And people always say to me how musical Trump is. And one of the first impressions I did as a kid, a physical impression, like an yeah. impersonation was Groucho Marx. Hello, I must be going. I came to say, I cannot stay. I must be going. And you can hear, you, you know, Groucho was born on the Upper East Side of New York. So he's got that New York thing in his voice. <laughs> and it's very melodic. And that was another thing I kind of inculcated into the Trump impersonation. So I'm always looking for like, what are the components, not just internally, but externally that affect. And then with Trump, you've got the physicality, you've got the faces. He's always got that, you know, like he just smelled, you know, a pile of crap look on his face. <laughs> He's kind of like, Who knows why? What yeah. That? What, is that? <laughs> what? what is that? You know, and then you get somebody else like, oh, now someone like Austin Powers is a created voice you yeah. know, that Mike Myers created, but Mike I still Myers, have yeah. to do the same thing, man. I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn the components of the voice, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one, I, actually, I think the first time I saw you, John, you were dressed up like, uh, like, like Austin Power. And I was like, who is this guy? Because you look identical. It's impressive. Yeah, my face <laughs> is very similar to his it's very similar to him. yeah i mean now now when you do donald trump it's impressive because you you, you don't do you don't look like uh, the president but you became the president my question to you is how long it takes you to really transform yourself because you it, do it every day i do it every yeah every day I, I you know i keep my head shaved because when i do dr phil i can I, when i do dr phil i can have a shaved head what were you thinking <laughs> and then after evil, but for Trump, because the way I, when I have all the, when I have my wigs made, one of the people, one of the wig people from the Cirque shows uh, builds my wigs here. When I used to live in New York, uh, oh, they're, they're great. You can see like, these are amazing wigs. Um, and they take 90 to a hundred hours to create each hair is individually hand pulled. And wow. it takes, it takes about 20 minutes to get that wig on to wow. get it on because you have one shot at getting the wig on <laughs> because if you don't do it right and the glue dries and you have to lift it off your face, you've got to re-clean the wig, remove all the glue. You have to remove it from your skin. So one of the reasons it takes so long to get the wig on is I have to be like, is this right? <laughs> is this, you, know, you know, and then you, you know, the glue's there and then you press it into place and it's, it's a French lace wig. So when the, um, the glue hits it, the spirit gum, it makes the French lace invisible. And then it looks like your hair is growing out of your head. And when I first, and I try to do that with all my, all my yeah. characters, it doesn't matter if it's Jay Leno or Dr. Phil, like I go like to the best wig people. I go to a makeup person. They help me design the makeup. And then that way I, I apply it myself other than Leno. Um, that chin has to be applied by a special effects uh, yeah. person because it's all you know the airbrushing and all that yeah but what i i'm one of the things the way i sell myself is is that i'm self-contained that i can do 
you know, 99% of these characters myself. So if it's a matter of shaving my head, contacts, wigs, doing the makeup. Because you have to your... learn to do everything yourself because you're the busiest probably actors uh, right now in this moment. And every day you appear, I said in, in my opening, in all these televisions or radio, wherever things, and you have to do everything yourself. So you became, right. where did you learn to do all these tricks with makeup and hair? And because I mean, a acting, I understand, but I mean, that, that, I mean, I know it's quite a work. It's a lot of work in there. The funny thing is, I, when I was in college, and I was actually studying theater, um, I was speech calm, but I was studying theater. But somebody, I, I, you know, like you're supposed to take a makeup class when you're studying theater. And I clearly, somebody said to me, um, so what, you taking the ma makeup class this season? I said, makeup class. I said, I'm going to have somebody doing my makeup. And little did I know that I'd have to teach myself, you know, a lot. And, and I've worked with some amazing makeup artists on, on movies and television shows, and I've learned a great deal and I've learned how to simplify things. But, you know, there's, you learn about shading and contouring your nose. And so each time I bring on a new character, I, you know, I'll go to somebody like, what's the best way to do this? And what's the be best way to do that? And then I have my, you know, my own experience. So with yeah. Trump, who I'm doing literally every day, like when we finish this, I'll have to get into Trump. There's a process that I go through, where, you know, to get the skin color right. And then I have to age around my eyes and then the whiteness. And then his skin has very, um, he, these are the nasal labial folds, which mine are, are deep, but they're not deep enough. So... <laughs> I've got to like enhance those. All this stuff has to be done right. So it looks good either live on stage or on camera. And you have to do it two different ways. When you do it on camera, it's one way. When you do it live on stage, it's another way. <laughs> so it's, um, <laughs> you know, you, you know, you know, it's, it's like you doing this show. You had to learn how to do it yourself. You have to learn how to do it yourself in this day and age. It's the only way to do it. Yeah, this is the only way to survive. My question to you, I mean, you're doing all these amazing, of course, the president and all the other, but have you ever met anybody that you, you've you been impersonated in person while you were dressed up like them? Um, I've actually, I haven't, I've, I met Trump in 1990. I did his 55th birthday at Trump Castle um, as Austin Powers, not him. Um, <laughs> but I met Kellyanne Conway when I was at Fox. This was on the run up to the election. And she said, he knows exactly who you are. And I knew that before, because I was one of the few people doing Trump back in 2004. I appeared on Fox News in 2006 for him. He was unavailable. Um, so he had to approve me to be on air as him because it was for The Apprentice. And it was a cross promotion between Embassy Suites and The Apprentice. And he was unavailable and he was supposed to be promoting this. And they brought me in instead. So I did the promotion. It was tremendous, <laughs> I have to tell you. It's, I, I, listen, John, it's like if, if I didn't have a video, I would think I'm, ta I'm talking to Donald Trump. So <laughs> you crack me up. Yesterday, I spent half of my day watching all this. Uh, I told you also this morning, this uh, video that you did for the radio, actually. There's a radio call between President Trump and Barack Obama. Well, I mean, what it was for, it was for Conan O'Brien and his writers okay. had come up with this concept of Trump calling Obama. And we did about at least a hundred of those. So when they would show on Conan's show, you would just see a photo of Trump and one of Obama. And it would be me calling up and say, Barack, Barack, you know, where's the toilet paper in the White House? And he'd say, oh, Mr. President, I don't know. You know. <laughs> I was I was laughing by myself. I was trying to to, to understand better. But and so, w w I'm, because I'm a writer myself, I have to prepare for this little Java live I do, and sometimes for my show. So writing material is a serious job. You have to yeah. be relevant and new in your position. Normally, I know that for instance, comedian they have teams of writers. That you mentioned the Conan O'Brien, but you. Yeah. You are doing all the writing of your comedy yourself. And right. now that you're doing the precedent, you have to stay relevant because they can be there tomorrow. They call you and they ask mm -hmm. you to say something funny about something that Donald Trump just said yesterday. I mean, how can you handle the speed of oh. you know I mean? And you have to be funny. Yeah. It, here's the thing. It's um, I get up every morning. <laughs> my first part of my day is news. I have to catch up on what I missed. I'm, when I go to bed, I'm going through all the top stories again 
because Michelle will say to me sometimes, you've already watched this. And what I'm trying to do is like, where's the comedy in this? And where can I kind of bank it in my head? And then, and then, cause tomorrow, you know, when I, in my mind, like the next day, there's going to be another wave of news. Yeah. So I have to like, what can I do? Um, you know, it's interesting that you ask about that because when I was doing the um, Totally Outrageous Brunch at the SLS and that was, you know, four shows a weekend, what I was trying to do, um, I, I can write really fast with comedy because it is changing so much, but I learned you can't get too far ahead of the audience. Um because something would happen that morning and I would put it in the act and people were like, what? and I noticed for the public, I consume news all day long, uh, especially, you know, the political news. Most people are maybe two days behind on the really big stories or maybe one day behind. So I learned I had to give it a little bit of breathing room before I put in something like that had just happened because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it. Every, literally, yeah. I'm constantly checking it through the course of the day. You probably know I'm even aware. better than Donald Trump what he just said because I right, mean. right, and you can also <laughs> and, and honestly, I can usually predict what Trump's going to say. <laughs> what I love because you know me, I never talk about politics things because I, I, first of all, I'm not American. I, I have a green card, but I am. Um, what not I love anymore. about you, not anymore. Uh, can you make me an American citizen, <laughs> Mr. President? I've done it before. I did it for Melania, so we'll do it for you. <laughs> The, uh, we're going in a second to talk about your first lady, your Melania. But uh, I mean, close. yeah, eh? yeah, because behind every great man, there is an even better woman. That's what, what we say in Italy. So keep we... telling me. <laughs> you make me forget the question. I had such a great question for you. You, you I were asking, the so why I got am I my... so handsome? Well, I, I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> You're too funny. No, what I wanted to say is that I love the fact that you, of course, made funny Donald Trump. He's funny because yeah. we are all funny people. I mean, I, I mean, I, I love him in a way that is himself. But so you exaggerate, of course, the trademarks and the things that you made everything. But you are very respectful. Though. Yeah, my, you know, my goal was not to, um, uh, you know, the policies and all those guys. You know, the thing, fact of the matter is, I'm a comedian. I want to entertain everybody. I don't want to isolate or alienate half the audience, pro-Trump, anti-Trump. I want to entertain everybody. He's a very humorous guy. And also I've been doing him since 2004. Yeah. So he's only been, you know, out of that entire span of time, he's only been president a very short period of time. But my goal is not to change anyone's mind about him. It's just to kind of, you know, point out and satirize those things about more about his personality than about policy, because it's, you know, it's not, I'm not a political comedian per se. No. I'm a comedian and I want to make people laugh. That's my main thing. Yeah. And that's what I love of you. I mean, because I mean, we, we're so other impersonator of Trump is somebody very political. What I like about you, you make me love actually sometimes Trump because I think it's very funny. I think actually that you never, you never heard from president Trump himself, but I think if president Trump will, found out when, they, when one of these days about you, he will love you because I think you make him even more likable. And uh, because, I mean, you, you make fun of him, but with, with respect in one hand, I mean. Yeah, well, we get a lot of, you know, we get a lot of comments on um, on, on the YouTube videos, especially the stuff that's gone viral. And people say, I don't like Trump, but I like your Trump. Or people say, I love Trump and I love your Trump. You know, so there's so there's yeah. you know, there's room for this this characterization. And I don't and like you said, there are people who are doing Trump that are very political. And it's like, uh, I don't I don't get it. You know, it doesn't really make I don't see the point in doing that. Yeah. Which is the question for me, of course, now he's our president and in November we have an election. So maybe he's going to be a new president again for other four years. But you as a comedian, of course, you're already thinking about the next. How do you choose your characters? That's I a mean great question. That is a <laughs> great, great question, because I think about here's the thing. Um, uh when I was a kid, you know, Rich Little and Frank Gorshin and all these guys who were impersonators, they were doing people from like the 30s and the 40s and the 50s and, and the 60s. The thing now is um, things are moving so fast culturally and our cultural history in this country is much shorter 
you know, I used to do Charlie Chaplin and like I said, Groucho Marx. Things here move much quicker and we have a shorter kind of like memory span of things. So you have to do people who are um, much, much bigger than they used to be. That's the beauty of Trump because he cuts across all lines, TV, movies, news, things like that. But you have to, you know, I, I try to bear in mind the fact that a lot of like my nieces and nephews that are in their late 20s, they don't even watch television. So uh, every now and then something's going to come along like a cultural flashpoint, like Tiger King. And then people are doing Joe Exotic, which is a really kind of the over the top character. But that's something you're looking for that's going to cut across every single demographic that's going to reach people. Because, you know, when I do Guy Fieri and I love Fieri, I love Guy Fieri. He's a great character. He's a great, great character. But, you know, if you're not watching the Food Network and you never saw Minute to Win It, which was on like five years ago, people come up to me and go, who are you supposed to be? You know, I mean, the people who know him, know him and love him. But if you don't yeah. know him, because he's not breaking through on all the other, you know, the other ways. So to answer your question, I'm looking for characters that a large, at least, at least 50% of the population know, you know, that's yeah. what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm, I'm saying right now, that you won't, you won't be doing me for a little while. So. <laughs> Because that you know, so the, I, I, think, I, I mean, think we might be able to. I can. I oh, I think you would be a perfect out of Valenti. I have an accent. <laughs> I speak with my hand, so I think I, you can. But for the know, moment, Giada, you could be my Melania. You realize that, right? You you know, when I had longer hair, I cut my hair. I was going sometimes to places, and people were. Uh, do, doing like this, excuse me, and they would say, "Did I ever told you you look like Melania?" I was like, yeah. oh, "Thank you." You would be, I, you would be a great Melania, especially since you're here in Las Vegas. You know, we could. I, I, I want to be your Melania anytime. Talking of which, though, you have a first lady in your house, and yeah. I adore her. So, November third, two thousand nineteen. Can you tell us? What moved you to propose to your? I have a beautiful picture actually. You guys were in Santa Barbara. Look yeah, at that. That's wonderful. Um, uh, so here's I had been planning to, um, you know, you know, pop the question, present the ring to Michelle. Yes. And we, this is what I wanted to do something really cool. And I'm on the road. Well, I was on the road until the pandemic, you know, like 35 weeks a year. And sometimes you're in great places and, you know, wonderful hotels and all this, but a client called me and said, Hey, through my agent. And then we started talking directly, but the job was in Santa Barbara at his home in the Hills. And he said, Hey, would you, this is really what he said. He's a wonderful guy. He said, would you mind if I put you up at the Santa Barbara four seasons? And I was like, would I mind? <laughs> no, I will not mind if you put me up at the Santa Barbara four seasons. And then I thought, and then right away I thought, gee, this would be a really great, beautiful, memorable place to, to, you know, walk down to the beach and get on one knee and give her the ring. Yeah. And, and then it even got better because he called back this client who's wealthy and he said, Hey, um, did you book your flight? And I said, yeah, I booked it. I'm going to go into Santa Bar. I'm going to go into Burbank and then we're going to drive to Santa Barbara. And he said, he goes, you know what? Just come on my G5. Oh. I'll fly you in. And I was like, uh, oh, okay. I was, and it just made this whole idea of proposing to Michelle even more memorable that we would fly in on a private jet, have a car oh. service, take us to the hotel, take us to this absolutely gorgeous hotel. And then um, uh, somebody in the hospitality business that I know said, you know, you should tell the hotel you're getting engaged. And that night um, we came back to the room and there was just a, I never saw so many rose petals in my life oh, that went from the room through, I mean, from the door through the room to the bed and the hotel was incredible and everything went great. And Michelle cried and I cried and I had a, hired a, an amazing uh, young man, this photographer who kind of hit out, but he went down early and put the heart of red rose petals on the beach. Aww. So when we hit that point, I got down on one knee and he knew to take the photos. 
It's like it's like a movie, but now, John, you are in trouble because when you're gonna get married, you have to surprise her with something even better. What are you gonna do? And when when what are you, you gonna get married? Yeah, what do you want me to do? <laughs> if you're if you're clever, so Michelle, let's marry tomorrow on Zoom. No yes. call fast yeah. like that. <laughs> I'll be Melania, you are Donald Trump, voila, done. <laughs> Yeah, Michelle appears in a white gown. Yeah. <laughs> but we it, it was one of those um engagements that just it went everything went so incredibly well. And I was so happy. And um, you know, I'd written this little, you know, engagement message and I started I couldn't even get through the first line and I started crying. Oh, I, I wish you had captured on camera. But you know, Michelle deserved this and even more. I I I, I briefly know you guy, but I mean because I'm here only for one here, but I feel like you are oh, part we of love you. We adore family. you. You're so talented. You're so open, and we love your your you know who you are and and your husband. You're just such wonderful people. And we and, I, and we love we love you guys. And 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 uh, I I uh, I have a question. When JJ met me and we married, in Italy there is tradition. You have to bring it to the priest, and you have to introduce your husband to the priest. And I remember when I introduced. Uh, JJ to the priest. Of course, JJ could not speak Italian. So the priest asked JJ, why do you want to marry her? And JJ said, because she makes me laugh. Because I'm a kind of a stand-up comedian myself, besides I'm a singer. I'm kind of funny. I mean, I think yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. It's part of it. And the priest could not understand the reason. He would imagine because I love her because she's... JJ said, translate today. And the priest said, what kind of answer? And me, I was like, I'm happy about the, the answer. Because I, <laughs> it's beautiful that we can make... A, each other happy and i'm funny so i make laugh judge what makes you fall in love i know i can't imagine what makes michelle fall in love with you because you are funny off and off the camera well what make you fall in love for michelle if you have to choose one thing one thing is that she is the single most positive person i've ever met she wakes up happy she wakes up happy and open to the world and open to all its possibilities. And she's this amazing giving person. She sits on the board of two charities. She's sick. I mean, you said one, but it's, it's, it's this amazing yeah. package of yes. who she is that she's just this amazing, loving, giving person who is a pillar of this community and who is a successful, um, is a successful person, you know, her own business, all these things that she does. And she really just gives and gives. And I had never met anyone like that. You know, how, and, how long ago did you guys um, met each other? And I mean, Michelle, she's also not from Las Vegas. What, did you met in Vegas or somewhere else? Oh, no, she's been here for 25, 26 okay. years. Uh, she's originally from Long Beach, California. But we met in, I think our first date was um, July 7th, 7, 7, 7, 7 of 17. So, wow, Michelle he even remembers that he's a keeper. Yeah. John well, didn't make it's a keeper. Up, so I wouldn't forget. <laughs> that was put in. You want her on? You want to get her on, on here? Uh, if she wants to go and say hello, you know, it's always yeah. a pleasure to see Michelle. Because actually, I have a question where is going to be the honeymoon? Hey, Michelle, my love, look, ladies and well, gentlemen. Michelle, how was, was good until he started talking and now I'm crying over here. Oh, I'm glad. Yeah, tears of joy. Michelle, how do I say your family name? Rothstein? Rothstein. Rod Stein. Every time I see you, because you appear, guys, all the time there, and I'm like, "That's Michelle Rod Stein." <laughs> Rod Stein. What, what, what? So, it, John is Italian, and where are you from? What is your heritage, Michelle? Um, Polish and Russian. Oh, European. So you see. Yeah. You're like really like Donald Trump. You find like a, a girl from Russia. Where, where is where is Melania from? I don't know. Slovenia. <laughs> Slovenia, but you Slovenia. know, Michelle, oh, okay. so not very mean, yeah. you know, uh, um, uh, you know, Sebastian Malis Maliscalco, yes, he has a great line. He says, you know, Jews and Italians, Jews and Italians, same company, different divisions. So <laughs> we're same company, different divisions. Different so we're divisions. Very similar, we're very similar. And uh, but you guys made a wonderful couple together. Every time I've seen you, because you, Michelle, invited me when I was just in Vegas for a couple of weeks to be part of an event. Which kind of benefit event was it when you asked me to sing a song? I remember it was at the Tuscany, but I don't remember what it was. And I said, Of course I do that. I think it was remember? the Purple. What Power was it for? Purple for the American Cancer Society, right? Yes. Purple. 
Yeah. Yeah, Perfect. that's what it was. Yeah. And, and, and I remember you, you were dressed up like the, the uh, Austin Power. I, remember that Paris, I had on my paper seat. <laughs> yes, with those yellow teeth. I remember yeah. I was see those wide, bright smile. <laughs> And I've never seen you before. So I was like, who is this gentleman? But I love you right away, both of you, because you were an entity. You know, I believe in love. I believe that when we find our love in our life, we possess the most beautiful and powerful things. Because even for you, John, and for you, Michelle, doing your line of business, we need to, to, to have somebody that support our, what we do and be part of what we do. So we, we don't have to feel like... I don't know that we, we cannot do what we want because we have to, you guys work together 24 seven, right? We, we are each other's cheerleaders, biggest cheerleaders for sure. That's beautiful. And uh, so now that Michelle, that you are there, my question, of course, before I leave my guest is always, have you guys ever been to Italy? And for you, it's different. Where is the honeymoon is going to be in Italy? Of well, course, we had right? talked, yeah, we had talked about it. We were supposed to actually go to Italy this year, mm -hmm. Me too. Um, but the pandemic kind of put everything you know. So no plans for a honeymoon? Where I well, I think we just have to get beyond when we can travel again, so we so we can plan, you know, just plan things. Because once we can travel again, we'll I'll probably have to, you know, get on the road. But, you know, I'm born and raised in Venice, so I hope you guys are choosing Venice. And uh, have you guys ever been to it, Italy, either oh, separately or together? I, I have I separately, have. but not together. Yeah. Oh, then it's absolutely a must. You guys need yeah. to go to Italy together. We've been on a lot, since I travel so much, Michelle's been on a lot of trips with me all around the country and outside of the country, which is, which is great. The fact that she can travel with me is really incredible, but we haven't um, been, you know, over to Italy. And that's what, something that I really, and we've been talking about it almost from, from the time we got together. So it's something I want to do. And uh, uh, have you been in Italy? Have you been to Venice, Rome, Florence? Where did you go? I, Which was, place I, I was doing a show in Roma. So I was oh. performing, I was performing there. So I got this, you know, when you do these shows, you have a limited amount of time to see stuff. But I had like one day dedicated to just be able to go around and see the Colosseum and see the ruins and see the Vatican. And it did was you try the food? Oh my God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it is just unbelievable. I don't know what, like the wine, everything just tastes better. It's yeah. Right. So much. There's just so much more to it. You know, I always do this trip of Italy with my fans. I think one day I was already talking to Clintons. One day we should just have like a couple of performers from Vegas and just go to Italy. And because I always do two shows and do something fun. It's going to be fun for the people, but for us, because we get. Oh, we love it. Count us in. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. Count us in. <laughs> That would be great. I mean, it would be something that would be funny to along the line to do it because I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, it's always fun. So, uh, who is cooking uh, in the house? Uh, you or Michelle? I used to cook, but she's taken over because now we do keto, so everything's <laughs> got to be cooked a certain way. Oh, yeah, okay. and, and Italian and food is not keto, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I I hear that. So so Michelle, she's the chef. So you know, are you cooking also Italian food, or you just absolutely? We do eggplant. We do eggplant parm, but it's keto version. But yeah, I, it's I really it's good Italian. though. It's really good. One of the things about keto is you can have cheese. You can have cheese breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So. We do it too, even though I splurge because uh, now, you know, on Saturday I cook and some of them, they ask me to do pasta. So I have to do, but normally I do keto diet myself. I can make oh, an amazing wow. pizza. Have you guys ever made a pizza with the cream cheese and the cheese? Did I mean, I have to that? give you the recipe. It's in this yeah. uh, recipe book that I, that you, I, I send you the link. And yeah, you please. Make pizza. It's keto, keto pizza. And uh, you can put on the top wherever you want, but the bottom is made with the uh, Philadelphia cheese uh almond flour and uh like a shredded cheese i don't even know right. if that's the word and then you mix them all together the, you 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 put in the microwave the the feta cheese and the cheese and you melt it a little bit then you had the almond flowers and with a with a machine or by hands you make a, like a little bowl and then you you make your pizza you put it 10 minutes really 10 minutes in the oven you take it out, you put tomato paste, mozzarella, wherever you want. The, the topping can be wherever you want in the keto diet, of course, wow. but it can be salami, it can be prosciutto, it can be. And then you put the other 10 minutes in the oven and you take it out. And I mean, of course, it's not the real pizza, but it's delicious. Yeah. I make it every weekend because, you know, I try to stay away from from bread and pasta, even though I'm Italian myself and I have to do it now for cooking. But when I, um, 
some of the day, I think I have two days a week uh, pro, uh, with the carbs and then all the rest of the week is keto diet. And the pizza is delicious. You have to try to make it. No, oh, absolutely. So, no. So if you want a recipe of more uh, keto recipe, I, uh, I, I I make them all the time. So I'm, I'm glad you guys are doing too. What can I say? The time flew with you too. I know. I know that you know, well, now you're, you're going to be dressed up like the president. The I mean, president. I, you're going to be the president. I won't be Bill Clinton. I'll be, uh, I'll be doing Trump. <laughs> You're so funny. And until what time at night are you busy doing all those things you do? You start what, in the morning, you're done? I, I worked till like 11 o'clock last night because it takes, you know, it takes a while to shoot, you know, shoot these things and get it right. And then, you know, so. Well, man, I have so much respect for you because you, I mean, you, you are very talented. One of my questions, and then I let you go. I always wonder because he asked me all the time if, if, if singing is something you can learn or if it's something that you have. I think that actually, being a good singer is, is a God gift. And then, of mm. course, you can polish it and make it better. Being a comedian, you see you're born a comedian. How much is starting to... Because I, I've seen people that want to be comedian. They're not funny at all. And they say the same funny thing you're saying, but I'm not laughing. Right. So it's talent I, of... It's, I, you know, it's... I, I came from a very funny... We were... My brothers and I are very funny. Obviously, I, I don't know. I mean, I've met people who've wanted to be stand-ups and they just they just just don't have it and they have good material but it's like this internal thing it's this it's this timing thing it's knowing what works what doesn't work it's all those components and that's you know i, I don't i think you can be taught certain mm -hmm. things but yeah. i don't think you'd be taught timing you know yeah. almost like a singer you can't you know either you have it intrinsically or you don't yeah, that's what I'm always saying, and then and then beside of that is also the, the the personality and everything. You are just brilliant in what you do, John. So, I, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for finding time. Uh, as you, I said in my opening, you're gonna be soon guest also the Order of Sons of Italy. When I mentioned your name, oh, they they John. said we would love to, and they will love you also there. I see a lot of comments. We had Daniel Emmett today with us. And so many people from uh, Janet, uh, all my people that appear every day, but many new Daniel, people. Daniel's amazing. He's an amazing Daniel talent. is another one, yeah. Right. Las Vegas is, I mean, we are many of us ama amazing talents, but also oh, so good people, talent. just like so you. And one of the things I just want to say, you know, you're new. I moved in. I came here about eight, nine years ago. One of the things about the Las Vegas entertainment community, it is so incredibly supportive. Like I came here and everyone just wrapped their arms around me. I'd never experienced that. I didn't experience it in New York. I didn't experience in LA or Philadelphia. You know, it's a great, you know, Philly's a small town. It's very supportive, but here everybody was so incredible and said, I want to introduce you to this person. You should meet this person. I'm going to make a connection for you. I'd never experienced that. It's one of the things I love about Las Vegas. And it's one of the reasons I want to stay here. It's one of the reasons like you and I are talking because, yes. you know, someone said, Hey, like make this connection. So it's, it's really, really wonderful. And I, and I love what you're doing and I love this town and I'm so proud to be part of the entertainment community that just gives me so much support and love. And I hope I can give it back to other performers. You already do. You make us uh, so proud. And uh, we know when you go all around the world uh, as our president, you are our gentleman, <laughs> Nico. And I'm very proud to call you now my friends because now I know so much more about you. I want to thank you. And please thanks and give my love to Michelle. Of yeah, we, She was on the back. The first lady went to the... Maybe she's already preparing your makeup and wigs. <laughs> Hello, love you. I cannot wait to see you for real so we can really hug each other. For the moment, I send you a big hug like this. Guys, uh, Diane Fiorentino teach me and uh, sign language. So this is I love you. Yes. So I really love you. And uh, so we, I love you both very much. And uh, I cannot wait for this to be over. So I get to see you and embrace yes. you for real. John, thank you for being my thank guest. You. Michelle, too. Actually, it was Michelle that made it possible for me. She said, would you love to have John? I said, yes, of course. <laughs> because, I mean, I would have never even thought about it because you are always so busy. I said, of right. course I want to have John. So but I'm not, I'm not too busy to do a cameo for anyone. So find me on cameo. <laughs> if you want a cameo, there's the plug of the day. And Saturday night, I'm going to be on a uh, a show called um, Deplorable Saturday Night, which is a uh, a comedy. It's a new comedy troupe that's starting out. And where can they watch it? When can I they can watch it? it on Facebook at 5 p.m. and I'll start posting about it. Please make sure you post so I can share it with all my people, and that's we will right. all be we are always ready to have a laugh. Guys, I love you. Thank you so much for being with me today, and I'm gonna see you soon for real. Oh.
Thank you so much. The both of you. Love you guys. Ciao. Bye. I don't want something. I told you that uh, John and Michelle are very special, special friends of mine here in Las Vegas. John is, as you have seen, is such a talented uh, a comedian, actor, impersonator. And I don't even know, how, because I know this is something for an, a comedian, but uh, John is even much more than that. And I see JJ is trying to accommodate the studio. JJ, say hello. Hello. That's JJ's arm. So what are you trying to do? Maybe I can do it. No, I need to just just to do so guys what was the sound okay today because as uh, you you remember yesterday my guest was and we went to another system the one that we use normally on sunday for the concert which gives a much better sound for music and singing but today we and we did an interview yesterday and we had some challenges because i was not able to see nathan east and nathan couldn't see me so the interview was a little bit more challenging than today so we decided to go back to the stream yard for the interview so i hope the sound was okay so just if the sound was okay just say sound okay and if you had some issue with the sound let me know because i'm planning so now to use uh, when i'm by myself the other system and when i have a guest so tuesday wednesday and thursday i'm gonna use the stream yard so i'm gonna be able to see my guest and i'm gonna be able to uh because the communication i mean as i said the importance of communication is better if i see my guest so i hope the the sound was good and if you want to watch again uh, the interview that i did uh, and all the appearance on jada life you can always go on jada.life and you can see all the episodes so if you have missed my nathan east yesterday if you want to watch back john di domenico today because maybe you uh, because i know sometimes those video froze but they froze here on uh, on uh, on social media if you go on youtube for instance on jada live they have been told that the sound is much better and uh, it never froze so if it froze for you that you're going in and out here you go there and uh, you're gonna uh, be able to see all the episodes and um, john di domenico mentioned that he's on cameo i'm on cameo myself and uh, so basically cameo i explain you what it is we uh, all people in the arts are there to um, wish you, uh, to wish you somebody happy birthday, happy Mother's Day, happy graduations, happy anything. Me, in my case, I can uh, do that, whatever you want me to do, and I can sing a little songs, of course, and you are donating to the arts. So you're helping all of us artists that we are out of work. I know many of you have been helping me um, immensely this morning, even Lisa Marie De La Rosa, she was asking me, she had trouble paying with, uh, because you know, you can get, give donation with Vimeo, with uh, paypal or you can go to jellavalenti.org and she said that she had some trouble with the credit card so she asked me can i pay you with zell zella i was i never heard of it but my husband said of course we have zell which so we is basically goes to the bank and through the phone uh, company which is a more secure thing so she sent me a donation also we have zell so thank you lisa marie and this morning i also got a nice uh, message from a lady called you know this morning i was guest of the ordinary sons of italy so i spent an half an hour with the national office of this be beautiful big organization for the italian american uh, in america and uh, they they had all kind of questions for me and the uh, one woman that was there her name is adrienne rodovich baker she uh, was there and she discovered my music and she said that uh, she wanted to uh, she cannot wait for this to be over because she said she wants to give me a book believe it or not uh, jake halley senior was uh, the team man in the wizard of oz and was her grandfather so she has this book called the heart of the teen man from uh, her grandfather and she said she want to give the book to me which i think i would be really honored to read it wizard of oz of course is is an iconic movie and somewhere over the rainbow you know it's one of my favorite songs so thank you adrienne for uh, for discovering me from doing that of course you know i always leave you with a song and uh, let me see if I had also something else to say. No, uh, um, I always leave you with the sound. And uh, Sunday when I did my From Home With Love concert, I sang for you. Actually, I sang for my brother, Roberto, a song of the Beatles. And some of you um, said, can you please sing the song again uh, in my mailing list? By the way, you can always send me messages there. I can answer to you. And I said, of course I can. So uh, it's a beautiful song of the Beatles. Actually, one of my favorite uh, songs of the Beatles. So before I leave you here yeah, once again, from the Beatles, the song Yesterday. Yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks 
as they are here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Suddenly, I'm not half the girl I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday came suddenly. Why he had to go? I don't know. He would unsay. Love was such an easy game to play Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday Why he had to Love was such an easy game to play Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday I believe in yesterday yesterday of course i do believe in yesterday you know every day i share some things about history because i think we are today we are the result of our history of yesterday even though we have to look forward we have to look to the tomorrow which is the sign of tomorrow talking of which tomorrow my guest is going to be a comedian this is the sign for comedian so like today my guest was john di domenico who is a comedian he's an actor and so much more and tomorrow i'm gonna have kelly clinton Holmes. you're gonna if you are not familiar with her she lives in in uh, las vegas i'm not sure if she was born and uh, raised in las vegas i do not believe so but we're gonna figure it out tomorrow but of course she is now a, a las vegas uh, resident she's married to uh, clint holmes uh, grammy nominated which i know you guys uh, were, were with me last week if you have not go on jada live dot com no jada dot life jada dot life and you can see my interview with uh, with uh, um, Clint Holmes amazing performance one of my favorite of all and um, especially as a performing is is a great performer so it's 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 you, it's amazing and you're gonna love Kelly tomorrow she's funny she's a singer she's an impersonator she's a beautiful beautiful woman and a beautiful woman that she could have gone and be like a sexy singer or a dancer no she decided to be funny and to be the comedian that she is so you're gonna love my guest kelly tomorrow i see a lot of people appearing today for uh, the first time so guys you're watching me i'm jada valenti here from las vegas of course i'm venetian i'm born and raised in venice italy but i do live in las vegas and as we said with john di domenico we love it here Las Vegas is an amazing place. When this is going to be over, I hope all of you guys can travel normally and come to Las Vegas and then come to Italy with me and, you know, we can, 
this is gonna be over soon. Uh, if you have missed any of my episode, you can see it from previous episode. You can go on Jada dot live and you can see all the thing. If you, if, I know some of you sometimes appear here for the first time and you have no idea what you're watching, especially when I'm talking. You're like, what is she talking? Who is she? I saw this morning some people say, I don't know her. Who is she? Well, I was like, well, I'm on, on my own channel, so make research before you stop to the stranger channel. So, but I, I answer everybody. I said, well, I'm a singer and songwriter for Venice, Italy, and welcome to my channel. Know. what else can i say i see a lot of people that uh, appear today for uh, the first time so guys welcome benvenuti and i see a lot of you that have been with me for since day one i think in a day or two we're going to celebrate 50 days together so it's going to be a big big celebration and uh, well I want to thank all of you that has also been helping me with uh, your donations. I'm never tired to say that, that I really uh, appreciate it very much. I was able to buy some microphones, some lights, some food, pay my electricity bills, my internet, because I'm cheerful and I'm happy and I'm positive all the way through. But of course, for independent artists, it's difficult because... We are out of work and we don't know when we're going back. And if you want, join me also on Cameo. This is another way that you can help. Or as I said, you can also, I saw this morning and then I'm going to say goodbye to you. Uh, my concert Sunday, of course, uh, was from La Fenice in Venice and Doug and Susie posted today a beautiful picture of Susie drinking coffee on my little Jada cup made from Neil Portroy here in Las Vegas. So, uh, Doug, you lost your cup. Now you have to buy another one because Susie wants to have the little Jada cup too. Look how cute is this one, by the way. It's very cute. So thank you, Neil Portroy, that made these beautiful cups that you guys can buy and you can drink your coffee with me every day and have a laugh together because it's a very funny little Jada. Guys, I love you. I want to thank you very much for being with me today. So today my guest was John Di Domenico. I'm going to see you tomorrow, same time, same place with Kelly Clinton. Grazie di cuore e ci vediamo tutti domani. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Gracias. E a domani. Just a Now I go, but I truly hope that I'll see you here sometime, someplace. And until then, my heart just say, Don Cushion, dear old Don Cushion, thank you for seeing me again. Though I'm here, in my solitude I know you are there, and in my heart I smile again And so I sing, here in my solitude Waiting to see you, same time, same place And I can't wait to say again Danke schön, danke schön Thank you, dear all of you to say. See you tomorrow. A domani.